Greetings. Well, yesterday I gave a seminar or a workshop in my uh, mastermind course for my students there on how to build a monetary model in Minsky. And it is the nature of these things you never quite finish when somebody else is uh, doing the drawing and you're trying to instruct them on screen. So what I thought I'd do here is show how to use Minsky to model the financial system. Uh, at a very basic level, I'm not looking at all the feedback dynamics from income distribution struggles and so on. I'm just looking at the, the monetary flows of the economy. And that's what Minsky is absolutely designed for. It's the, not only the best, I think it's probably the only program that lets you do this. And that is to build a model of the financial system, use what we're calling what we call godly tables that enforce the rule of uh, accounting that assets minus liabilities uh, equals equity, and then uses that as a basis for a financial model of the entire economy. So this is the, um, the Ravel or Minsky interface. Ravel is a commercial extension of Minsky we hope to launch later this year. Uh, just the usual bits and pieces, you have the standard old file menu. Probably the most important thing to point out there is you can export your canvas, which is what this area here is, in a format which can be used as a graphics import. So that's a vector graphics, PDF, uh, PostScript. You can even output the equations of the model in Mat and LaTeX, and you can export the model to MATLAB. That's probably the most useful thing on the file menu. The edit menu was for uh, editing things like dimensions, which I don't currently have in sight here, but the usual, the usual um, uh, elements, plus also doing an auto layout of a model and so on. This is to insert various objects inside the um, uh, mo uh, uh, program. So for example, if you want to put an add key in there, then you can come to binary operations, click on add, and then you get an addition uh, operator attached to your mouse. You click where you want it on the screen and that's then placed there. But the faster way to go about doing things like that is to do it from the menu here. This is the, um, the widget bar. And these are operations which involve two operators, binary operators. These are fundamental constants. These are operators involving just one function. So for example, a square root. If you put that through here, you can uh, put a square root operator on the screen. Uh, not that I'm going to use that in this particular uh, example. Uh, but the most important part for, for the what I want to cover today is the uh, godly table. So I'll just rubber band here and select those two and delete them and then click on a godly icon, a godly table named in honor of Win Godly. And just as happens with every element in, in, a, in a Minsky model, when you first click on a widget, it's attached to your mouse. You then click where you want it on the screen and then it stops moving and you've now got a, a widget there to represent a bank. Now we make an enormous use of a right click menu here uh, in everything in, in Minsky. So if I right click here, there's now a range of menu operators, and one of them is to give this a title. So I'm going to call this the banking sector. Let's click on title. A little window comes up and call this banking sector. And uh, the icon view, of course, saves space when you're building a, a large model. I'm only going to build a small one here, so I'm going to put this in editor mode. And when I click on that, then I get the actual double entry bookkeeping table turning up on screen, but of course that's very small. You'll notice these arrows around the outside of the object and that applies to any object in Minsky. If I click and drag and then release the mouse, then I make the object larger. And now you can see uh, much more clearly the essential part of Minsky showing assets, liabilities and equity and making sure that each entry you make obeys the rule that assets minus liabilities minus equity equals zero and then you know you've done your accounting properly. So I'm going to right click here again and choose open the godly table which brings it up in a uh, editing mode with uh, more power than we have on the screen at the moment. And now you see the same basic structure as, as here uh, but with arrows to add and subtract different operators. So uh, these are where you, this, this is where you type in the name of an asset a name of a liability and the name for the equity here. And because I'm working with the banks, I'm going to do this first and say this is banks uh, subscript and a curly bracket. Uh, actually, I'll illustrate without a curly bracket. If I type equity here, then you'll notice what happens is the program subscripts the first E and then leaves the rest at the, the same level as the previous characters. That's exporting what's called latex as a mathematical formatting language and a subscript before a character says subscript the character. 
if you want to apply that to a string of characters, then you type a curly bracket, and that will now subscript the whole word equity there. Now, one essential thing about uh, private about banking is the banks must have positive equity. So I'm going to show them starting off with equity of 10. And now I have to type in other entries here that will bring the entire uh, row to zero because we enforce the rule that assets minus liabilities minus equity equals zero on everything, including the initial conditions of a model. So one of the obvious liabilities that a bank has is deposits. And one of the obvious assets is loans. So let's just start with a bank having made a hundred billion worth of loans or the banking sector having 90 in deposits and therefore having bank equity of 10. So that gives me a balanced row there. Now, uh, this is showing the banks having positive equity of 10. Of course, there are other actors in the economy that have the deposits as an asset and the loans as a liability. That is the private sector. So I can now bring in another godly icon here. And I'll place this over here. Right click and choose, put it in editor mode. Right click and choose title and call this private sector, private non banks. Make this window larger, the same as for the other one. And now if I right click and bring up open the godly table, then there are now these wedges here. And what these wedges do is look for an asset or look, look look for a liability that hasn't yet been shown as somebody else's asset. And here look for an asset that hasn't been shown as somebody else's liability. And this is the way that Minsky builds up an interlocking system of accounts. If I click here on the down arrow for assets, that will find the liability of deposits. I click on that and the operations that have currently been done for deposits come across. Of course, there are very few there. Equally for liabilities, Loans are an asset of the banking sector, but a liability of the private uh, non-bank sector. And now I've got that situation shown here. So I can now type private and I'll make that equity the same story, curly brackets, E-Q-U-I-T-Y. And now this has to be minus 10 to balance the entire model, which is just the initial structure to, to begin with here. Now, what should be obvious straight away, and this, this is a rule that applies for the entire financial system, because financial assets are a claim on somebody else, the sum of all claims is zero. That's just a given. And what that means is that if you have the banking sector having positive equity of 10, then the non-banking sector has to have negative equity of minus 10, exactly the same magnitude. Um, so this this is the, the, the aggregate side of assets minus liabilities uh, minus equity equals zero. The other side of what's your asset is somebody else's liability. The sum of all those assets and liabilities will be zero. So we're now starting from a, uh, a very basic model to start building a model of a private monetary system. And I'm going to start just with this and, and not um, bring government into later. I know that's not the way that uh, is often done to teach these things with modern monetary theory, but I want to point out that you could have, it's quite possible to have a viable private credit system. But one of the uh, many problems about this is it means the non-bank sector is always in negative equity, which encourages speculation on, on non-financial assets to get into positive equity. It's not an issue I'm going to cover here, but I think it's an important part of the real world. Now let's go back, I'm just going to tab across to the window for the banking sector, which is still open. You can have multiple windows open at one time. So I'll just open this one here and open this godly table. And then I can show the two on screen. So I'm going to Alt tab across to the banking sector. And there's the view from the private banking system. So I'm now going to click on a plus key here to create a row to show financial operations. And let's say type net lending lending by the bank by the banking sector to the non-banking sector and here's the classic this is this is why we say loans create deposits if you give credit dollars per year into the deposit accounts of the of the uh, non-bank public uh, that is because they're simultaneously accepting taking on a liability of, of credit dollars per year in terms of loans and that is all there is to banking that's why we say banks lend out of nothing 
Uh, it's not that there's not costs involved in lending, but the actual creation of money does not involve transferring it from somewhere else. It's literally a creation of money. So having done that, uh, I think we, we don't, we're, we're still working on a, a new interface for the program. So the updating isn't as fast as I would like. You can see it's happened on the screen here, but it hasn't happened on the godly table. So if I go back and choose open again, uh, then I see that operation there. So that is creation of money by the banking sector. It's pure and simple. What I'm now going to do is start using this to build a very simple monetary circulation model of the economy only. I'm going to make the window here a bit smaller, uh, move it over a bit so that I can bring up another window. And that's coming from the variable tab here. We'll probably change the location of this over time. We have what we call a browser. If you click on browser, Another window will open up, <laughs> pardon me, and that will show you all the variables and parameters that you defined in your model so far. And notice actually uh, that, that, that this is one of the many buggy things will happen. I redefined that to be lowercase equity. The previous one is still stored there. So uh, that's something we need to fix up in the program itself. Now I want to bring down deposits. So if I click on the word deposits, I can now that's now attached to my mouse. I now click on screen and I'm going to bring bank equity as well in places over here. And in this extremely simple model, money is a sum of the amount of money in the deposit accounts of the non bank sector and the short term equity of the banking sector. So this is uh, effectively the income account for the banking sector. I want to add those together and say that's the money supply. So I can simply do it one, one of two ways. So I can come up here and click here and choose plus here. Or I can simply just type that directly onto the keypad, but I'll, I'll leave that for a later operation. This is now saying deposits plus bank equity equals, and I'm going to type the word money. And I can just type wherever I am on screen, and the text input window will pop up there. And then click enter. And then the... Um, uh, area where you can define uh, whether it's a flow or it's a constant or a parameter here, uh, give a short description, so say the money stock, uh, which will turn up as a tool chip. And I can change, uh, I can set a range when I'm determining it as, as a parameter itself, then I can put maximum minimums and stuff in there, but I don't need to here because it's going to be defined as a sum. So I click on OK. Now the word money is attached to my mouse. Click here. And I'll zoom in a bit to show what's going on. That's using the scroll bar to zoom in. When you click in a object, but not in the circles, as you can see there, then you drag the location on screen. When you click on the circle and drag out, you bring out an arrow. And this is where you're now making an equation. And if I let go of the arrow some distance before it reaches the word money, it looks for the nearest input, of course, there's only one, and it will now rubber band its way Ah, and it didn't work. Isn't that great? It's right here. Okay. And now what I've now defined is an equation saying money is equal to deposits plus bank equity. So there's a total of 100 in the economy at the moment. And I can now show that as an equation here. If I click on the equations tab, you will now see uh, just up here that money equals deposits plus bank equity. So Minsky is building these equations for you in the background. And as I said, you can export these equations into a word processor and things like that. So that's the basic. Um, 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 way to build a model in Minsky. What I've, what I've now got, I've added deposits and bank equity together to have money. I'm going to do a little simple trick here and talk about a velocity of money um, in Milton Friedman style. and say the money turns over so many times a year and that is GDP. So I'm going to cause this to be a parameter, give it a value of two, which is roughly what it was before financialization took over, say a maximum of three, minimum of one, and a step size of 0 0.1. Now click on OK, and place this next to money, and then I'm now going to just type, just type a multiply key, key the, the asterisk key on the keyboard to type that directly onto screen. Now I drag from money to the top of the multiply block, VM to the bottom, and now this is going to be GDP. also measured in monetary terms. And now what I want to do is to find credit. 
And again, this is an extremely simple model. It's not something I'd use to describe the real world, but it's to illustrate the structure of the financial system. So I click on credit here, bring this down here, and I now need to multiply GDP by something. So I'm going to call this credit. Well, actually, just to make it easy to see, CR for credit divided by Y for GDP. Um, and that will now bring up the window. I'll call this, make this into a parameter because I'm going to give this a set of values first of all. And let's say we start from zero, but have a maximum of credit being equal to 30% of GDP. So let's make it 40 because that's how big credit got to be in Spain during the bubble economy there. Min minimum of minus 20%. We've got the minus key there. And a step size of 1%. And now if I Bring up here, move that around a bit, type a multiply key. Then I've got credit. And now I can look and see what's happening with GDP and money. So if I use the, the rubber, hold the mouse, left mouse key down and drag, then I can select that object. Control C will copy and Control V will paste. And now I can paste that and bring down a graph. So let's click on a, a plot widget here. Bring this over, click to one of the input area, one of the four input uh, tabs on the left hand side there. I'm going to right click and choose options here and make this just with the title of GDP and years for the time axis and dollars per year, billion dollars, whatever it might be, uh, as a label of the um, uh, left hand side. And now let's go back to uh, oh, the, these magnify windows. Let you decide uh, to zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, reset to original size, and make the uh, uh, the current display fit the window of the um, uh, the current size of the window. So that's the basic story there. Now let's just run the model, and nothing happens at the moment because there is no credit there. I'll change one more detail here. This is the, another bug. Uh, we have to get rid of this one in the next uh, around, uh, next round of, of, of modi uh, modifications to the program. But notice there's options there in preferences. The very first preference is show values. And that what that's supposed to mean is that the numbers that are flowing through the account are displayed on this table. Now, obviously it's ticked. It should be working. It isn't. But if you notice, simply click on OK then those numbers turn up. So if you, you, this is both a sign of the developmental nature of the software and what's necessary to both identify bugs and get them fixed. Okay, so now we've got that. Uh, when you, uh, you know, I'm just moving the, the window around a bit because uh, things have expanded somewhat. So if I hit the run key, of course, nothing is happening now. But what if I change the amount, say the velocity of money, go from 2 to 2.1? Then GDP goes for a jump. Go back down to two, it falls again. What if I increase the ratio of credit to GDP? And now we get growth. Not necessarily sustainable. That's another issue to uh, be explored elsewhere. But increasing credit, cre credit creates money. People spend the money, therefore get growth in GDP out of positive credit. And if credit goes negative, you get a fall in GDP. Now, believe it or not, that is heresy from the mainstream economics point of view. They think credit has no role in aggregate demand. You can find that in uh, Ben Bernanke's uh, essays on the Great Depression. Uh, and that's because they work with a model of what's called loanable funds, where banks don't actually create money. They act as intermediaries. It is simply nonsense, but they prefer to stick with nonsense to the real world. I prefer to stick with the real world. So there's the basic modeling of, uh, of how you can relate the amount of money to the amount of GDP and then credit changing the amount of money and hence changing GDP. So that's an extremely simple starting point for the model. I'm now just going to drag this up here a bit, put it out of the way, and now start extending this to include government money creation. And that, of course, is another area full of myths. Uh, so let's now bring in a few more operators here. I'm going to drag this down a bit to make some space. Uh, notice that one thing I didn't have here as an asset were reserves. 
A neoclassical economist think banks lend from reserves. They don't. Uh, they play a, a role like oil in your car, lubricating the engine. You would never put oil inside your petrol tank. Uh, but the way that economists, uh, mainstream economists think about money is as if uh, oil, oil goes into the petrol tank. So I'm going to right click here, open the godly table, and now add one more asset there. So I click on the plus key, and now I type in the word reserves. And let's give that a value, say initially, let's say 50. And notice that therefore changes the balance over here. So I need to change these numbers to make them consist. So say 135 there, and say banks, I'll make it 130. And banks having equity of 20. So now that's a balanced equation. So now I've got reserves there. Why do I need reserves? Well, let's take a look at government spending. That's where we have net government spending. So this is spending minus taxation. And I'm going to call that fiat uh, for what I hope is an obvious reason. Uh, so if government spending exceeds government taxation, the government is putting more money into private deposit accounts than it's taking out of them. Therefore, it's creating money in precisely the same way that bank credit creates money by adding to the uh, liabilities of the banking sector. Now, of course, I've got to balance this by uh, having another entry, which brings the sum of the whole row to zero. Obviously, you're not borrowing from the banks when you do it. The only possibility is you have an account at the central bank, which is called reserves, and that is also increased by the operation of fiat. So I click outside here and that operation now turns up. So now I've got government money creation going on. Now I'm going to leave out bonds and all that sort of stuff till later. I want to come back and see what is the essence of government money creation. So the essence of private money creation is that the bank is able to increase its liabilities and create and increase its assets at the same time. Uh, that is going on here as well, but where does the fiat come from? So we have to go further back. And we know reserves are an account, uh, a whole lot of accounts that private banks have at the central bank. That is where they do the, the settlements of transfers from one bank to another. Uh, so I now to bring in the central bank. So I'm going to click here, create another bank icon, bring it down here, right click and give it the title of the central bank. and right click and bring up its menu get it put it in editor mode as well right click and that's actually turning up my lower window now you can't see that but i'll i'll bring it up with actually double click double clicking also works to bring up a godly table so here it is it is the central banks we have at the moment we have uh there are no liabilities that haven't made somebody's assets, so that particular drop down is empty. But if I click here in liabilities, it shows me reserves. So if I click on reserves, then that operation comes across to the central bank's table. And at the moment, it's got minus 50 in equity, and I've got minus fiat with no balancing item. I need an additional uh, liability here because the treasury has an account at the, at the central bank. So I'll just call this treasury. Um, and I'll, um, well, that, that'll do just as a title. That's the Treasury's bank account. Let's say it's got 50 in it. We'll say 60 to have a different number initially. Now I've got the central bank equity. Let's type CB to save, save space. The central bank. Ah, I've got a C there. Let's get rid of that and make that a B. Central bank equity. Ah. And I typed in one too many braces of Minsky identified, so I've got to get rid of that one. And now we're in business. So now I can say this is a total equity of minus 110. And now Fiat comes out of the Treasury account. So minus Fiat here. And there's drilling going on in the room next to me, so I'm going to stop at this point. Or maybe once I complete putting the, um, uh, the Treasury's account inside here. So there's Fiat. We now click on another banking icon uh, titled this treasury. Uh, 
uh, trials and tribulations of trying to get work done and working from home mode. Okay, so I'm going to go back and open the godly table for treasury. Uh, the assets, click on the asset window. Treasury comes across as an asset. At the moment, I don't have any unallocated liabilities there. So I'm not going to have treasury equity here. And currently got initial value there of 60. So I'll type 60 as this initial value. So we then fix that up. And if I now show, where, where do I show minus Fed? The only possibility is that it reduces the equity of the government sector. And I've made the, up the wrong word there. Let's go back to FIAT. Okay. So now we have an integrated view of the whole system. I'll just change this across to editor mode again. Move this out of the way down here. Put this table up. Now what you can see, I've also got Fiat turning up there. Um, so let's actually bring Fiat in here as well. So I'm going to have Fiat divided by Y for GDP. So this is the scale of the government so-called deficit. Let's make this a parameter. Initial value is zero for that again. Maximum we saw during COVID of say 30% of GDP. Minimum of minus 0 0.05, which seems to be about as far negative as they managed to get that. And a step size of 1%. So I now have a, another multiply block I need over here. So type a multiply key. So GDP multiplied by fiat divided by y is going to be fiat, which is shown up here. Click on fiat and bring that down. And now hit reset to start the whole thing off. I'll drag GDP over here. Make it a bit wider. Okay. And I've got zero credit and zero fiat going on. Now, as I showed a moment ago, Positive credit will give you growth, but so will positive fiat. And in fact, they can work against each other. You have the government creating money and the private sector reducing it, changing a GDP. So both affect the level of GDP. Both government money creation and private money creation change the amount of money in existence and therefore can change economic activity. I'll leave it at that and come back to um, modeling this properly with the next uh, uh, video after the people next door stop drilling. I'll just finish up one little thing here. That's the, I didn't, I know that's correct. Okay. So why am I getting that? This is a little error that turns up occasionally, which you can get rid of by hitting the recalculate button, he says, hopefully. Uh, so, it was 130. That should be okay. Let's hit the reset button. I think I'll edit this bit out. Okay, that's my mistake. So I've got that done. Hit the reset. No, it disappears. I didn't modify private equity for the fact we've now got uh, reserves <coughs> turning up in the system as well and changing the overall layout. Now, just to um, make sure I've got that right here with the banking sector here and the private non-banks, equity of 20 plus uh, 50, so that's total equity for the private sector of 50. What is the equity of the government? It's 60 for the treasury minus 110 for the central bank. So the total is the negative of the equity for the private sector. Minus 50 here, plus 50 there. So the government creates money by going into negative equity, and that causes the private sector to go into positive equity. And that really summarizes the difference between credit money creation and fiat money creation. Um, and I hope it's this is beginning to get you into the nonsense about needing to reduce government debt as an aim in itself. Oh, obviously the hammering next door disturbed me when I was trying to finish off this model. So I noticed when doing the conversion that I hadn't finished doing the private uh, non-bank sector.
because I've still I'm into the feed as an entry to deposits, but I haven't shown the matching entry for equity there. So I'll just go across and repair that and add this on later. So I'll now bring up this godly table and then say, well, the fiat spending, which increases deposit accounts, doesn't come with any extra liabilities for the private sector. So that therefore increases the value of their equity. And now I can go back and look at the full situation here. I notice at the end there, I've got fiat being minus 1% of GDP. That means negative fiat, so the government running a surplus, is increasing the equity of the, of the government sector, which is the obsession of all the politicians these days, but it's decreasing the equity of the private sector. And this is why it's essential to take a general view, which Minsky lets you do, of the entire financial system, because obsessing about this lets you ignore that you're actually doing this. You're, you're putting the private sector in a negative equity by trying to reduce government debt. 